Hey, I saw some great uh, Steve Ditko tribute videos, and so I thought, you know, why not make one? Uh, he was one of my all-time favorites, Spidey artists for sure, and I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's sad to hear about that he was, you know, maybe alone or something, but um, figured... I'll just show some stuff. So here we go. Strange Tales 110. This is, it's, I really wish that there was a Doctor Strange cover on this. But there we go. Some really great panels. I mean, look at that. Those three right there. That's almost like an EC book or something. That's really great. Okay. Try to keep this short too. But that's almost impossible for me, but short is definitely <laughs> this first issue. But hey, you know, I really wish it wasn't this lame-ass cover. Oh, I swore. I try not to swear on these. Okay. What's that? This one. My copy is really, really beat up. Hopefully it won't fall apart in this video. <laughs> yeah, it looks like uh, someone was selling it for $12.50 at one point. Look how great Peter Parker looks. It's awesome. I like this one, uh, him climbing. You know, I like how all these early ones, they had the, like, three rows of panels. It reminds me of, like, comic strips. This is great. It's first costume. He does a lot with those panels. And something about it gives it uh, this kind of... I mean, it's a dense... These are dense books. It takes a while to read one of these old ones. And I like comics of today. It seems like every time I buy one, I'm, I finish it in like 10 minutes or something. There's a, just a lot of storytelling in these. Even this one, you know, is... Uh, shorter page count but it's big i always thought that was weird right there that one with the, his the two dots in the eyes but you know it it really emphasizes the surprise he's feeling which is great look at that i love that him walking off classic cover I know he didn't do it, but man, it's good. I love that one. Okay, put this. This one. A lot of people don't like this cover. I, I really like it. If you get one that doesn't have much red, then it's definitely kind of worse, but. I don't think it's as bad as most people say. I like that first page. I 
think he was still getting the feel for how he wanted to go with the characters at this point. I don't know if they knew it was a success yet. Although they must have knew, known something because, uh, you know, I think they canceled one title. Well, I can't remember. I mean, obviously, Amazing Fantasy got canceled, but they, uh, they did something to get this in its own series. They were still under that printing only eight issues a month or something like that in the, in the contract. Oh yeah, I like this. I like this panel. It's like uh, Hulk number one or something. <laughs> See the similar rocket. That'd be cool if they mentioned Banner. Although yeah, this is a rocket that goes up into space. But I can't remember what the rocket was, or was it even a rocket in uh, Hulk one? To read that again. Is there a pinup in this one? No. Oh. I have a real thing for the final panels for some reason. It's a, this one's kind of cool, number one, because it has uh, like no letters, which is interesting. <laughs> now that's. I'm not a f terribly amazed by that drawing, but. Maybe that wasn't even Ditko. There's that last page. Yeah, oh yeah, here we go. Last page of the first story. And so a lonely boy sits and broods with the fate of society at stake. What will his decision be? What will Spider-Man do next? Only time will tell the end. Only the time that takes you to turn two pages or one page to the next story. <laughs> His Fantastic Four were definitely uh, different. <laughs> Something about them, they're, they're static, you know, compared to what I'm used to seeing them in the Sol Silver Age. You know, uh, Kirby style. They're pretty static. But the staticness of Spider-Man and Peter Parker and all that somehow really, really works. He got to do his own, his own cover, right? Yeah. I'm not sure what I feel about the like multi paneled covers. But hey, this splash page is one of my all time favorite Dickos. Oh, I just love that. That is great. Look at those big bold blacks on the vulture's wing. That's really awesome. <laughs> and the way he shows, you know, like, who would think, I want to show the bottom of Spider-Man's feet. <laughs> I don't think too many artists would really have the the nerve or maybe even think of doing that. It's a hard thing to draw, too. Look at the giant web under his arm, that's awesome. The vulture truly looks pretty frightening in this. Jonah. Let's go to my favorite page. Oh, look at that. This might be, I wonder if this is one of the first time he talks about this. His belt. It's a lot of, uh, no mask, which is nice. <laughs> Look 
how geeky Parker looks. That's pretty funny. Oh yeah, Parker was so into my at this point. This wad of bills he paid me is what I like also. <laughs> I mean, I know, uh, you know, the whole thing about, like, appealing to the teenager of the time, you know, uh, more so than, like, you know, Superman or something, but I don't know, the greediness of Parker in the very early ones is... I'm surprised if... Uh, People related to that so much. I never really paid attention to his inkers. Oh, looks like, yeah, that's right. He did ink a lot of stuff himself, I believe. Did he do that the whole time? That'd be impressive. <laughs> it's a pretty crazy looking alien thing. I don't remember this. Oh yeah. Look at that. To show emotion and character, but also let you know that it's Spidey. Oh, I love this ad right here, this house ad. It's awesome. Watch for the greatest symbols in comics. Oh yeah, because this was the first, I believe, I don't know if it was, uh, Spidey 2, but I'm pretty sure this was the month where this, oh, I don't know what you call these things, but that Marvel little side character, uh, rectangle on all the covers, start happening. Um, I think Ditko designed that, but hey, I mean, that's pretty iconic. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at that. Describing his... Oh, that's a great drawing right there. He really can draw. Looks like he could draw... a figure from, like, any angle. Yeah, at first I wasn't too crazy about Ditko. I liked him more than I did Kirby when I first saw him. Which is funny because Kirby's one of my favorite ever now. Oh, let's see. Don't have too many more. Three. I'd like to get a better copy of this. This is one of my favorite covers. Just how prominent he is. This has some great, great art. Maybe not so this first page. I, I like that. Up there. Uh, this I thought this the origin story of Dr. Ock was awesome. So good. Look at that. That is just great. And he tells so much in just one page. The early Spider-Mans are just so great. Like, they're so fun to read. I think they hold up still. Um, like I said, they're dense, like tons of content. And highly collectible, which is a plus. Although I guess not so much when you have to buy them all. <laughs> They are pricey, but you know, thankfully there's a lot, a lot of them out there. Oh yeah, Spider-Man got beat pretty bad in this. 
remember there's being some really good. Let's see. Check with, uh, I like that. That's great. He's right, by golly, he's right. I think Parker does start to be a little uh, more like hero-like in this one. Peeling. Probably more peeling. I like the emphasis on he's being, you know, a scientist. Pretty cool pinup. I'm surprised, you know, there's there aren't way more comics without the pinups. No. Because I think comics were pretty disposable even at this point. That's not good. Add the return of Doctor Doom. Yeah, oh yeah, the first letters page. That's pretty cool. The Spider's Web. Two pages. Pretty nice. cover I guess they're making a movie out of that it's gonna be the new villain I don't know. so uh, now I'm just gonna show some non Ditko stuff but before that this was one of my earliest spider-man memories I had this, but it was on tape, but it was the, <laughs> the Invasion of the Dragon. I listened to it all the time, and as a, a young kid, like, it was pretty scary for some reason. I haven't listened to it in a while, but uh, the voice acting is pretty fine. Drago the Dragon, something like that. <laughs> I like that artwork right there. I wonder who did this artwork. 1974 and this was I think might have been my first comic ever was this one right here just I mean talk about a great issue to have I really got my first impression of spider-man from this book so I read it over and over and over and over and over again. Now the next, I don't have many Romita at all, but I have this uh, art book, which shows some Romita. His craftsmanship is pretty amazing. That. So that was the evolution. And you know, of course I saw the uh, cartoon a lot. And I wanted to show this. This is interesting. So, in FF Annual 1, they do, uh, there's like a little story that is like a retelling of Spider-Man number 1, where 
he hangs out with the F FF. But this time Kirby draws it. And I thought that was interesting, like the difference. It's funny because Spider Man almost looks stiff. But the FF, pretty dynamic. I think it was definitely the right choice to uh, give Dicko Spidey. Although AF1 is uh, still one of my favorite Spider-Man covers. Uh, this is funny. I was just watching a, a video about original art and uh, Glenn Danzig of the Misfits has this original piece and it looks really amazing. He's a lucky man. And then, so let's see. It went from Romita to. I'm not sure if. This was like the regular guy right after Romita, but I thought Gil Kane's Peter Parker was really cool. I don't have too many of these. And you know, this isn't an emotional book, but you could really feel Peter's, what he's thinking, and feel for him. Of course, you know, it's that. Crack. Spider powers, I love you. And she's dead. Very different looking Spidey. Then there's uh, obviously a great Gil King cover. Now this inside, Ross Andrew. I don't know if he was the regular guy. <laughs> His Punisher face is <laughs> not the greatest. But it's all evolution. And, you know, this is a tribute to Ditko, because none of this, would he, I wouldn't even be holding this if it wasn't for him. This wouldn't even exist. Especially, you know, the more I read about it, the more it was obvious that, you know, Stanley just kind of put the finishing touches on on some of the spidey stuff like uh, he uh Ditko did did most of everything I would guess especially like I think he he would just turn it in like right at the deadline so it's not like they even had that much time to change it and maybe that was why he inked his own stuff too to maintain the most control that's my business superhero not yours Maybe when I'm dead, it'll mean something. F fighting a lonely war. Something tells me that man's got problems that make mine look like a birthday party. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder if they knew how big he would be. Although it took a long time. It was really the mid 80s, I think, that took off. And this was, I think, 74, 73. I really liked some of Miller's, Frank Miller's Spidey. And he didn't do much, but, well, and his Punisher is great here. Look at that. That's awesome. But the Spidey is very like Superman, actually. And I think, you know, like if this was the first Spidey, maybe it wouldn't have taken off. Like Dicko established him. Uh, so now, you know, people 
just knew who he was like so they weren't like they could draw be more free about how they draw him because you already knew who spider-man was and what he what he stood for and I don't know his like state of mind and stuff look at that I love the elegance of his Punisher for some reason it's too bad Miller didn't do more Punisher when uh he was in his prime Then I wanted to show just a couple of my early books. You know, when I, so I got that Superman, Spider-Man, but really I was, when I started buying a lot of books, it was right around this time. So I was really used to the black costume. And, you know, I saw, even if you didn't like Spidey, you knew so much about him. I mean, because of these things. I should find out about this guy. Because I don't have too many books where it's the, uh, the red one. Is that just early? This was some of my first books. I got uh, 21, 22, 23 in a three pack. Kind of like this one right here. I bought a lot of these things. If you did too, I'm sure you did the same thing I did. You would like move your thumb kind of to try to see the Marvel box. There we go. Yeah, you you'd do this to see what was that middle book. <laughs> you couldn't do that with the DCs. Person. I really like the Dicko's Mysterio. I did like how McFarlane though brought back the original Spider. When he did, you know, I was, we everyone was just so used to the black costume, and then when he brought it back, you're like, oh yeah, like yeah, why haven't we brought? the red one back it's awesome <laughs> so a lot of credit to him for that assuming that he was his idea uh, one last one last thing this uh, thought was really cool it's in this book same one I showed before but man that uh, looks really good in black and white Take a look at this. Those two. Anyway, rest in peace, Dicko. Thanks for watching.